Hello, uh, after a long time, uh, I'm making another video for my channel. Uh, my students often ask me about uh, reading, what kind of books should I read and how do I cultivate a reading habit? And I thought I will talk about that today. And uh, the points I'll, I'll be discussing with you are based on my experience as a person who developed reading habit uh, very early in life and has uh, benefited from that. And reading, uh, by reading, I here mean both English and uh, mother tongue. Uh, you need to read as much as possible in your mother tongue as well. It's very important to do that uh, while uh, for the language sake and for a more wider uh, outlook, for a wider knowledge of the world, it is very important to read English books as well. So, though primarily I am talking about reading English books, I have in mind cultivating reading habit in mother tongue as well. So, the first tip I would have uh, or share with you would be to start with stories. Uh, very often uh, there may be famous autobiographies, very scholarly sounding books like uh, The Discovery of India or um, very important books like that which are wonderful and which you will certainly read at some point in your life. But if you are a beginner, better go for simpler material. Stories are ideal. Uh, short novels would be uh, uh, ideal. You will slowly read and graduate to more important books. So it is not very wise to start with a so-called important book because you may have difficulty with the language because you are not, if you are not used to reading, you will have difficulty with the language and maybe you will be discouraged from going on and reading more. What we want at uh, the initial stage is for you to read as much as possible. And the best way to do that is to go for the storybooks, even books meant for uh, people who are much younger to you uh, by age. So if you are maybe you are 25 or 30 year old person and you, you can, it's very okay to read a, a book meant for uh, children, maybe 10 year old child, an adventure story, very good for you. It's good, so long as you enjoy it, okay? Well, uh, it need not be a classic that you begin reading with and, and not a book uh, simply because your teacher suggested you should read a particular book. You need not do that. Uh, you have the freedom because I'm talking about reading outside the classroom. You are not limited by what the teacher said or what the, the, the philosophers tell you. So, to start reading, begin with stories and start with thinner books. If you go to the library perhaps and or go, go and borrow a book or buy a book, go for a smaller book. This is very practical because if it's a thin book of 35-40 pages, it's very likely that you will finish it and then you will have a feeling of achievement and you will want to read more books. So, more thin books read is much better than a fat book which you start reading and never complete. So that is my second tip for you. Third tip is that very often we have a notion that we should be taking notes when we read books. You should certainly do that with your textbooks at school or college, but not with the book you read in your leisure time. So by reading habit, I mean the books you read during your leisure time, stories, novels, and uh, you know books on infotainment, uh, combining information with entertainment. There are so many books available these days uh, on science, if you're interested in it, on on sports or or on uh, geography, history, whatever your area of interest may be. You are free to read those book books if you are if you want. But uh, it's uh, not a very good idea to take notes while you read uh, widely. Okay, so if you, if you are studying a textbook. Uh, certainly you should take notes, but when you are reading uh, for fun, reading with the intention of developing a reading habit, it's not a very good idea to keep take notes because that reading should be natural, spontaneous and continuous. So if you focus on taking notes, maybe that, that continuity, that, that, that what, what do you call it, spontaneity will be kind of compromised, which we don't want uh, to happen. Again, very often we are told that we should look up every meaning, uh, every difficult word you come across in the dictionary. It's not a very wise thing to do when you are planning to improve your wide reading. So when you're reading a novel, for example, 
you just go on reading even if you come across a difficult word it's okay don't run to a dictionary every time because if you keep doing that you'll get tired of reading and maybe you'll stop reading so we don't want that happen so go on reading and eventually when you see the word again and again you will start understanding sometimes you may uh, may may read a book without understanding much i have done that the first book which i ever read the second book which i ever read they were i did not understand i understood only 10% of what was in the book but i was determined to read uh, through the book not very big books as i advised from personal experience that i'm talking and i did read through without understanding without ever looking up a word in the dictionary that is how you do it so don't feel discouraged if you don't understand words you just go on reading become familiar with the words well this doesn't apply when you are studying a text that you have an essay that is prescribed you certainly use a dictionary to understand you need to understand everything in detail but reading a novel reading a story reading a book for pleasure you have the liberty not to look at um, you know look up in a dictionary every often and um another very important thing is carry your books around with you take your book with you because very often you feel that you don't have time to read but you do have a lot of time there may be times when you you know sit waiting for a bus sit outside um waiting for some officer to arrive maybe sit in the hospital veranda waiting for your appointment or when you are with another you you are in the hospital uh, sitting with a relative who is unwell you have plenty of time so keep your book in your keep a book with you all the time keep it in your bag uh, carry it in in your hand so make that a habit carry it around maybe we, we need to develop that kind of a culture in our society where people have books all the time and they read whenever they can people will initially think you are a bit odd but that is okay we are not worried about what others think about us what is important is for us to develop ourselves and finding time is not easy uh, if you think you are you'll read when you are very comfortable that will not happen carry your books around with you read a bit whenever you can and some people say that i'm going to read 10 books this month or 10 books this year 25 books etc it's good to have goals like that if you have the habit of setting goals i do not i am not saying it is bad but if you have the habit of setting goals set attainable goals if you think that you'll be able to read only 5 books in one year set that kind of a goal because if you say that i'm going to read 25 books and you read only one you will not feel like going on with that you'll your motivation will be lost so don't set difficult goals for yourselves you don't have to because this is not a compulsory thing part of a curriculum this is something you have decided on your own so don't set difficult tasks and get confused with that feel free do this uh, you know in the most relaxed manner reading gives you a lot of happiness books are your most reliable friends and they are your best teachers so you know don't tie yourself up in rules that you create some people do that and then it's very important to experience books books have uh, a peculiar aroma a new book has a peculiar aroma old books have their own smells you once you start loving books you will feel very happy experiencing these smells and the feel of the book etc and for that visit libraries visit libraries visit book exhibitions where when that happen maybe after corona and go to book stalls and go through the books and you, know, you take books in your hand read the in the back part of the book which is called the blurb there will be some short extract about the book about the author even if you do not read the whole book it is very important to have the feel of the book look at it become familiar with books so books will uh, give you a, a peculiar feel which is which nothing else can ever give because books contain the life and the lived experience of so many people there are such a lot of experiences which we will never be able to have in our lives lot of knowledge that we will never be able to experience first hand in our lives all these things are contained in the books so visit book stalls visit places with books whenever you see a book have a temptation to take and read at least go through it and we must remember that there are different ways of reading see you read when you read a novel as i told before you don't go to the dictionary you don't take notes you sit and read it from as as fast as possible hmm? 
but a textbook that you have to study, you have a totally different approach. It's a totally different kind of reading. You read line by line and you come back and read again and look up the, dic the dictionary, the meaning, you find out the meaning. And after reading, you, you make you write down a gist of what you have read. All these, these happen when you study a textbook. That is called intensive reading. But extensive reading, it's actually when you read extensi extensively uh, that you really uh, learn the language. It's uh, Reading helps you learn language like nothing else can. No teacher can teach you English or any language. But when you read books for, uh, for, you know, for fun, wide reading will give you an infinite quantity of language which, which no teacher, no teaching program can ever give you. So read widely when you read uh, and in a relaxed manner uh, when you are reading extensive, uh, you know, extensively when you're reading novels. Don't uh, read a novel as if you would read a textbook where you make, uh, you know, uh, underlying points, etc. You don't have to do that. Don't even spoil uh, a book. Uh, for example, I have a book here. Um, I, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't fold a, a page like this when I read. I, I, I just put a bookmark inside and close it so that I'll know where I have stopped. So you don't have, you, you should not fold the book or harm it in any way because books are such valuable treasures that you need to keep uh, and take care of. And again, uh, reading a novel is different from reading a newspaper. A newspaper you don't actually read. You know, you, you heard of people saying that I read seven newspapers every day. So that is a different reading. Uh, and he, maybe uh, he's a, such a busy person, many politicians, uh, for example, many professors, for example, read many newspapers every day. It doesn't mean they read it from the line, first line to the last line. That is not, that's not possible. If you do that, you will never be able to finish your daily newspaper in a day and you will be reading today's news, newspaper tomorrow. That, that, is, that is because that's not the way in which a newspaper should be read. Uh, you go through a newspaper and you, you know, you read or you rather rush through the important points and that is how you read a newspaper. You, you maybe you read an, a, a particular news that is very interesting in a very detailed manner, which happens very rarely. So that, that's the way you read a newspaper. Well, there are different kinds of reading. That's, that's just what I want to tell you. So uh, uh, a textbook is to be read intensively. A novel is to be read in a relaxed manner, but you read everything in it. Uh, a, a newspaper or, you know, pamphlets and invitations, etc. You will just run through it and get the idea. So that is, that, that is something we need to keep in mind. And uh, then uh, another very important thing is very often uh, we start reading a book and we don't seem to like it. And then, but but your friend told you that, or the or the or the, or the reviews tell you that it is a fantastic book that you should read, but somehow you cannot go on. But generally, even if you find the first page boring, the second page difficult, the third page a little dull again, after the fifth page, sixth page, ten pages, you may start loving the book, which is very likely to happen. But you always have the freedom, even after the tenth page, you still find the book. Um, not very interesting, you have the freedom to abandon that book. Don't throw it away, keep it aside and you take another book. You sometimes may go back to the old book where you stopped maybe two years back and you may find it differently and you may finish it and want to read uh, more of it. Such things happen. But remember, you are not committed to complete finishing a novel totally. You are so determined that you want to finish it. What happens is, it will take you such a long time. Maybe you plot through it for a, for six months and finally finish it. You find it such an exasperating thing that you won't read again. So I would say, if you find a book a bit boring, keep it aside and start another book. You go back to the book again later, you may not go back to that book later. There are so many books that I have left like that, which I've never gone back through to. And there are also books which I have gone back to. For example, God of Small Things is a book which I, after reading a few pages, uh, initially I found that uh, this is not a book for me. I don't like it. But later, maybe three or four years after that, I took up the book again and I started reading. I found it to be one of the most uh, uh, amazingly, brilliantly written uh, texts ever in my life. One of the best books that I've read in my whole life. So such things can happen. So it's it's there are no compulsions. There are no rules other than those fixed by you when it comes to your reading. Finding time for books, as I told you, today we have time, 
only we feel that we don't have time. You may need to cut a little bit on your phone time. You know, phones are important. We do everything in our phones these days, smartphones, I mean. But, uh, you know, social media thing can wait. Maybe you will need to cut down on that. How that is done needs to be decided. That's it's a matter of decision that we need to take on cutting down on mobile phone, cutting down on TV and focusing more on books. That kind of time you'll find. But you also will find times when you are waiting, as I said, waiting for a bus, etc. When you carry your books around, you will certainly be able to read more. And another thing is, uh, today there are so many e-books available and you don't necessarily read a paper book. You know, there are e-books. Well, again, it's, it's a matter of choice whether you read a paper book or e-book. Both are equally okay. There is no rules about that. It's your liking, your preference, your convenience that is more important. And uh, finally, uh, today there are so many audio books that are available. So, you know, when you are waiting for a bus, as I said, uh, it might be easier to listen to an audio. You can read a book on the bus station, but once inside the bus, perhaps you may not be able to read. The, you know, the, the book will shake with you. Maybe every day you travel two hours uh, to and fro, fro to the college or to the place where you work. It is better to start reading, listening to audio books. It's a fantastic thing. You can, it's comfortable. You have your personal listening device and you listen Nobody can stop you. It will transport you to another world. So that is listening to audio books is, um, you know, it's another option you have. Though reading and listening are two different things. Uh, if you have difficulty reading, switch to listening. That is also equally good when it comes to, you know, both language uh, input and for knowledge of the world and for happiness and peace, reading books, listening to books equally good. And these are uh, places where you could uh, have, uh, you know, uh, stuff to listen to. YouTube has so many audio books. Audible is a paid service uh, of Amazon where you can listen to very recent books. LibriVox will have free books read to you. Uh, and you, you can have mobile applications for this or you can read uh, them on, a, uh, listen to them on, on your computer. Easier to do it with a phone because it's portability. You can, you can just go around listening to it with a Bluetooth. Um, earphone or a wired one according as you like it but audiobooks are an excellent option and uh, coming to the towards the end I would recommend that you should buy books you know books are excellent gifts you know today <laughs> we give mementos large plastic stuff which people won't have uh, any space to keep in their homes always give books as gifts always give books as mementos and buy books for yourself. Make when you get some spare money, invest it on books. Investing on books is not really investing. It's actually an en enriching, nourishing thing. It's like spending money on food. So buy books and enjoy them. Keep them uh, on your table. Carry them around with you. I involve in them. You get lost in the world of books. You will never, never be unhappy again. So that is uh, all that I have to tell you. I hope you will remember all these things with you. And again, I want to tell you before I conclude, these are not the only things you can say about books. These are my personal opinion based on my personal experience. People are different. People have different approaches. There may be other ways in which you can approach the same thing. I was sharing with you my personal uh, experience based on my personality and my uh, what shall we say, encounters with books. So, thank you for listening to me. We will meet again soon.